Hey, it's Doug and Beans from Hammersmith Equestrian Center in East Dennis, Massachusetts. I'm Doug Wrench. I'm the head trainer. I'm Amanda McAfee. I'm the assistant head trainer. So, um, geez, where do I start with this, Beans? <laughs> I don't know. You know, because, <laughs> I, I, you know, I just had um, a memory rekindled with a recent experience somebody had with a spooking mm. horse. Jeez. And you know the way I feel about spooking horses? I, I, you know, I mean, yeah, there's... You know, there's a saying that life is, 10% uh, of it is what happens to you, mm -hmm. and 90% is what you do about it. Mm -hmm. So horses can spook, but it's your reaction to how you handle it is, is decides if it's gonna go someplace really bad, yep. or if it's gonna be a bump. Yep. And um, unfortunately, the problems I see with spooking beings are almost like 99% human. Yeah, most of the time. You know, a horse will come here, and uh, they'll say to us, you can't do this, can't do this, spooks mm -hmm. here, spooks there, spooks in the ring, rears, does this, does that. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be real, real cautious, won't we? Yeah. Take it real slow, mm -hmm. we'll get on the horse and nothing ever happens. Nope. So, um, so I, I guess that's where we're going with it. I mean, you, you have the two, two traits you have to have to be able to ride horses. Mm -hmm. One of them is no fear. No fear. No fear, no fear whatsoever. If you can't get over that, and maybe in the beginning you're a little nervous. Yeah. Okay. If you're if you're on a you're going through the woods and you're canter, you're canter on the beach. There's a little bit of fear is good, you know, yeah. keeps you safe. <laughs> but to be afraid of the horse and afraid every time you get on, that's bad. The other thing is physical conditioning. Yeah. You got to be in reasonable reasonably good physical condition to ride a horse. Yeah. Now, are, are there exceptions to that? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you have you know grossly overweight people that learned to ride when they were younger. And they can still ride fine now, okay? But it's hard to learn when you're not in good physical shape. So those are the two main things. But but the no fear thing is huge. If you can't get over that, you're never going to be able to ride properly. Nope. You know? And, you know, Beans rides uh, her horse, Jagger, who's right there. Um, Jagger. He would have joined the video, but he's, he'd rather eat lunch. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Came here as a spooky horse. Mm -hmm. um, he still has his moments. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, today you had a little moment. Yeah. Your, your fault, though. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, it's all how she reacts to it. Yeah. And how she, and, and if you're going to, people don't understand. You have a 1,200, 1,500 pound animal, animal that can take their back hoof and pick a fly off their chest. It's, it's a pretty good, you know, scenario. They're going to feel you when you're tense. Yes. You know, and whenever you're tense or uptight, that goes right to the horse. The horse says, ooh, there really is something to be scared of here. Exactly. Because horses are flight animals. Mm -hmm. The yeah. horse doesn't want to fight. No, because it's one thing, like, with Jagger, a lot of the time, he'll, like, jump to the side at something. So, I mean, I think of, like, being scared of something and having a spooking event as two separate things. Horses, I mean, they're herd animals, they're prey animals, so of course they're going to be easily startled by things. But it's when you as the rider don't know how to respond to a horse being startled by something is when it turns into this huge thing that people call spooking and think about it as this really scary thing where you have no control over the horse and of course like they're big animals that have a mind of their own and there are times where it's a little bit of a struggle to communicate who's in control of the situation but if you know especially with Jagger like when I first started riding him I had heard stories about Jagger and his spooking and taking off and things like that but he's also a horse that's really looking for his rider to be able to take care of him and he wants to know that he's okay and that you're going to take care of the situation so you know his things like bicycles and stuff like that you know if i start getting really tense and i'm like oh my gosh there's a bike coming he's going to freak out he's going to move his legs in every direction end up in someone's front yard or down the road but if i just sit there and talk to him and i say it's like hey jiggy like where it just very quiet and I practice this in the ring with him too, when I need him to calm down, when he's really fast or uppity, you know, I practice using my voice with really calm tones or purring to him to get him to slow down. And I do the same thing when I think he might get nervous about something off property or in the ring. I start to calm my body and I use that purring tone to calm him down and get him focused on me so he's not focusing on the scary thing. Because if I'm not focused on the scary thing, he's going to be less likely to pay attention to it. 
Yeah, some, some beans just mentioned that's really important. I don't know if you guys really picked up on it, but um, everybody knows the cluck to make a horse go faster. That's an up cadence. You want your horse to go up and increase its pace. But few people know of how to slow horses down. Some people sing, some people hum, but the kind of the, the, the equivalent of the cluck is the purr. Okay, a lot, but don't expect to get on your horse that hasn't been used to being handled that way and have them respond to it. Every horse responds to a cluck, yeah. or almost every horse. Yeah. Not every horse responds to the purr. If you start doing it, the horse will start to understand. Yeah. And if you get into a tight situation where the horse is panicking, then you'll do that and the horse will calm down. You know, it's uh, one, of, one of the things Beans and I have to do a lot of times is get on horses that either have bad reputations or they just threw somebody. And we know that when we get on them, we have to be able to, it's like, okay, here we go. We got to get on them. We got to be confident. We can't throw any. Yeah. And, and that's really hard sometimes. So you as a rider really have to train yourself yeah. that, okay, when things go bad, yeah, I want to pull back on the reins and get on the horse's mouth and do this. Mm -hmm. And we're making the situation worse. Yeah, it's like what I tell a lot of my students, you know, it's a horse's natural natural reaction to jump or spook at something. And it's our natural reaction to tense up or pull back. That's just what our body automatically does without us thinking about it. So us as the rider, we really have to be able to counteract our natural reactions to situations and be able to train ourselves to stay calm. And even being able to rely on something like purring to your horse to get them to calm down that gets you you have something to immediately go to and you're going to be less likely to start trying to overthink the situation you know what you're going to go to you know what you're going to do and it's going to calm you down yeah and keep your wits about you yeah you always know? i know with finn a lot of times on the beach he'll get going really good and he won't want to stop so as i'm starting to pull him down trying to sit you know sit up tall and knees in he may at the last minute say like, no, I'm not, I'm going to give you a big buck. Mm -hmm. And when those things are a possibility, first of all, you got to be aware that you might do that. Mm -hmm. Second of all, you got to really keep your wits about you, really stay calm mm -hmm. and expect something like that and just gradually pull him down. Just gradually, gradually, gradually. It's the old adage when you lose a stirrup on the beach, what do you do? Don't find it. <laughs> you don't look for it, right? Because then you find out pretty quickly after it's happened once or twice, you can ride just fine with one stirrup at a yeah. full gallop. Yeah. It's the people that panic and start looking for it. Now you're off balance, you're not centered. So suddenly you're on the ground and if you're at a full gallop on the beach and you fall off looking for a stirrup, all out of balance, uh, you're probably gonna get hurt. Yeah. You and know, so. you, the other thing that's important is don't let people scare you about specific horses too. Because you also have to keep in mind when you see someone riding a horse and the horse might be really spooky and really reactive when that individual is riding the horse, but it is probably how that individual is riding the horse. So you can't get on the horse with the thought process of that's how your ride is going to go. And you know, people a lot of the time, spooky horses get bad raps and people are like, oh, it's a scary horse to ride or oh, it's a dangerous horse to ride because you're more likely to fall off if a horse spooks because maybe they're gonna try to take off or rear up or buck. But if you're thinking about the fact that it's a scary horse or it's gonna be a scary ride, of course it's gonna be a scary ride because you already have in your mind that that's how it's going to be. So as a rider, you really need to be able to tell yourself, you know, you can't predict how every ride's gonna go, but you have to be able to tell yourself that it's not a scary situation and you have to trust yourself in the horse that you're riding. If you don't trust yourself in the horse that you're riding, you're not gonna be able to hand those, handle those spooking situations. If you build that relationship with your horse, any kind of situation where they get scared isn't gonna be a big deal. Right, and being just mentioned about don't don't listen too much to what other people say about the horse. You know, you don't know how they rode the horse and what their skill ability is. Just recently I rode Beans, one of Beans' friends is Appaloosa's. Mm -hmm. And I took one look at this horse and this horse is absolutely beautiful. Leopard oh Appaloosa. Yeah. I'm just Gorgeous. like, wow, like I want to ride this horse so bad. Looks so great. Even though the horse sat down on the cross ties almost, almost crushed Beans. <laughs> I think it was just a little spooky thing. Well, nobody told me anything about the horse. I thought the horse was dead broke and it's, it's probably green broke, right? Yeah. And I got on him and he kind of takes off a little bit, but you know what? Um, I probably would have been worse off if I had known all that ahead of time. Yeah. I just kind of, you know, when the horse, I just got up to a canter and the horse didn't want to stop and there were things in the way, you know, and we, yeah. I tried to do whatever I could and, um, 
I think I, I was better because I didn't know all the history and I didn't know all those things about it. Yeah. And nothing wrong with the horse. I mean, it's just first time I got on him. I probably shouldn't have cantered him the first time. After we got off, Bean says, well, I didn't canter him the first time. <laughs> so. so I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you just have to be, you can't have preconceived notions. And when people tell you about horses, there's a spooky horse, is bad. You, you really, that information, unless this horse is going to turn around and bite you and take a, take a chunk of your shoulder off, you don't, you don't really want to know all yeah. the information, right? And, I mean, sometimes horses are spooking because they're trying to see what your reaction is going to be to it. I mean, there is a little pony mare that I used to ride, and she really wanted to know her rider and know that they were capable, and all of a sudden she would spook. And that there is nothing that she was actually scared of. It was her trying to test the rider and see if you were capable and confident enough to deal with the situation. Because horses are herd animals. And again, you're putting yourself as head of the herd, being on top of them. And you have to be able to let them know that you can protect them because they're willing to let you ride them because they don't have to let you get on their back. Right. Yeah, horses don't. A lot of people think when horses are, were, are brats and they don't want to do and they don't want to listen, People don't understand that the the horse it wants you to be the leader of the herd. Yes. The leader, the, the, it's two people, two individuals in a herd. The horse and you. They want you to be in charge, but they're just not going to say, "Okay, you got it. I'm giving it to you." No, they're going to test you mm -hmm. to see if you're capable of leading them. And if you're not capable, in their opinion, all they're going to think about is getting rid of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you prove you can do it, well, then the horse is perfectly happy. And you have a great relationship, and the horse doesn't spook, and everything works out. Yeah. So to sum things up, beans. 99% of the time, or 90% of the time, it's pretty much the rider's reaction to what the horse does. And is the horse yep. gonna, gonna be skitterish about something? Yeah, I mean, we have a horse here, you've seen her in videos, uh, Melly. Mm -hmm. First time I tried to cross the road, the big scary mm -hmm. double yellow line, she refused to go over it. She was terrified of it. But yeah. you know what, she went over it once, she didn't do it again. Yeah. So you pay, say calm, it's not a thing she's gonna be spooky about all the time. So look, look at yourself in the mirror, if you need help, get help right yeah you, know, uh, you have to be confident that's really i think the key to being a safe rider you know you you know have to learn how to sit in the saddle properly and all of these things but if you can sit in the saddle and you're not confident you're not going to be a safe rider you really have to have the confidence and if you put yourself in a position where you're on a horse and you do not feel confident in that situation you shouldn't be riding that horse because it's probably not going to go well and you don't want to get hurt doing something because you're not comfortable in that situation. There's always times to push yourself out of your comfort zone, but never try to do it to impress someone else or because you feel pressured into doing it. You know, know yourself, be able to read horses' body language, and know what you're capable of and capable of dealing with. Okay, and obviously Beans and I are very passionate about this subject. <laughs> we feel so many people, um, they try to look for a much more complicated education, you know? And the old saying is about common sense is what? Not that common. No, nothing common <laughs> about common sense in the horse world. No. So, uh, thanks for watching. Thank you. Make sure you share and yeah. like us. Uh, please put comments in there. Yeah. If there's anything that you want to see, um, videos, we love to do it. Um, anybody wants to plug for their business? I know we didn't do one this week, but we do have kind of a little bit of a backlog yes. of people. But anybody else? <laughs> If you send us t-shirts like Mon Moy, uh, Dog Mon and Horse, and dog, yeah. Horse and Dog, that was awesome. Yeah. So uh, we'll see you next week with another video. Yeah, thank you for watching. Thanks for watching.